How you doing, everybody? It's Al Williams, and I want you to discover how to run a profitable extended stay rental during the pandemic without prior experience and without a big investment. Let's get right into it. You're going to like this because we're going to help you discover how to acquire real estate with no money down and how you can quit your job if you want to and have more freedom, more income, and a way you can get started with little experience today. But before we get into all this, let me show you some properties so you can see the profits you could be making when you sign up. This is my Aplex. I had to purchase it, which means I came up with a down payment. It was $105,000. It took me five years <laughs> to get this place. But fortunately, it puts out a profit of $4,858 each month. And that allowed me to walk away from my engineering job and become a full-time dad and part-time investor. And that was my um, that was my goal. That was my financial goal. So I reached that, but I kept going. I talked to the owner of this place here and I asked him about uh, renting one of his units for my corporate housing business. And he agreed. And this pr produces a profit of $832 a month. This place was owned by a, a, a mom and pop landlord. I told them what I was doing. They liked the idea. And this brings a profit of $887 a month. And this place here, talk to the owner again. I said, hey, can I use your place? I want to run a corporate for my corporate housing company. He said, yes, it produces a profit of $728 a month. And this place here, management company, um, I actually have two units here. And each one of them puts out a profit of $862 a month. And this is my worst performer. It brings in a profit of $470 a month. Hey, you know, I didn't have to come up with down payments on these so I could keep it rolling. And this one here, it covers our family's food bill. So $400 is a big help to us. And my best performer, I want to show you the full range. It brings in a profit of uh, $1,643 each month. Now I started coaching people and this is Derek. He rented this upstairs unit and his goal was to be able to pay off his credit cards. So this place brings in a profit of $522 a month, and he's adding that to his credit card bill, becoming debt-free pretty soon. And this is Rochelle. We're going to be talking about her a lot in just a few minutes. She's in Reno, Nevada, and this place, this little cottage here, brings her a profit of $900 a month. Here's Tim. He's in Wisconsin, just in uh, Appleton, and I started working with him just before the pandemic hit last year, and his place has been producing $1,000 a month. So it's really good. It's really working out for you. And you're going to like this if you if you like the idea of following a plan and, and putting in the work too, because that's required. If you if you're at that, that stage in life where you you want passive income and you, you like the idea of um, not working till you're 65, <laughs> you're going to like this. And if you're an action taker and if you hit some stumbling blocks, you can you'll ask for help and uh, um, get over things. Well, this is specifically for you. And, but if it doesn't sound like you, then um, <laughs> it's okay to sign off because it's not for everyone. If you're super comfortable, like, like this nuclear engineer I met, <clears throat> he was comfortable. He liked the idea, but he didn't have the, the drive to put it together. And, if, and we're going to be talking about the hospitality industry. So if you like people, this is for you. If you don't like people, it's not for you. And if you're looking to get rich quick, this, I don't know how to do that. So, um, hey, it's okay to sign off. But for those who stick around, I got a special for you. I got a special gift for you. Stick around to the very end. It's going to save you a lot of money and it's going to save you a lot of headache too. So I'm Al Williamson. Let me introduce myself. I'm typically up on stages. I hope to get vaccinated and get back up on stages soon. I'm always talking about how landlords can increase their income and reduce their expenses. There's different techniques, different technologies. And I was getting around before the pandemic, <laughs> slow down now. I run 27 extended stay rentals in Sacramento, California. And I've been training people how to do corporate housing since 2014. So I've been around for a long time and have taught a lot of people how to, how to do this, you know. Oh, wait a second, we got someone who's joined us. I'm not sure who it is, but welcome aboard. Ask me questions, unmute yourself, all right? So so Adweek, um, 
and a whole bunch of different things happened during the pandemic. And I just want to summarize them for you by talking about headlines as a, as a way of summarizing it. So here it is at week. It says, with travel on pause, Airbnb looks to long-term stays. Those are stays uh, 28 days and more, it says. And, um, and here's a different headline. It says, it's in the state of America, that's that hotel with a kitchenette in it. It's kind of optimized for longer term stays. It's outperforming peers amidst COVID-19. It was, it barely got phased. And here's another headline, how midterm stays may rescue short-term rentals because short-term rentals rely on a lot of travel. When travel dries up, they, they go out of business, but midterm stays are just fine. And here's the, the CEO of Airbnb himself. He got on CNN. He was telling people that, that um, people are booking month long stays. <laughs> That's the name of the game. Longer stays, you can actually do this um, in a pandemic because that's what people want, okay? And why is that? It's because when travel's restricted, there's still a demand as emergency projects and healthcare services and government contracts, they keep going. They don't stop It's essential workers are doing essential work, even in a pandemic. And these companies right here, these national brands, that's what they count on and that's what they know, okay? Do you have um, any ear town? Let's see who's here. So I can um, so I can see who you guys are. So I'm not talking to myself. Oh, it's just a phone number. Go ahead and mute yourself if you would. You can talk to me. Anytime. Let's see. There you go. I can allow you to talk. How about that? You can unmute yourself and chat. So I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> All Hello. right. Hello. Who's this? <laughs> This is Bernita. Bernita, pleased to meet Bernita. you. You too. Mm -hmm. Hey, so yeah, I'm gonna, question, yeah inter interrupt, interject. Oh, no, I'm just uh, just listening and um, just want to make sure I catch you today. So. Okay, perfect. Well, you're on your phone, so I'll describe everything, okay? Okay. All right. So this, this slide here shows all these national brands of, of extended stay hotels. And they're all over Extended State America, Residence Inn, Town Place, Suites. That's that's two of them by Marriott's and Stay, Stay Bridge and Homewood Suites by Hilton, Candlewood, Home Two Suites by Hilton, Suburban and, and Wood Springs. All those are, are main for stays longer than 30 days. They're all over town. What what city and state are you in, Bernita? I'm in Long Beach, California. Okay, you have tons of every, all of this stuff around you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me hit my next slide here. So extended stay America was barely phased by the pandemic. The, the, at worst, in April of last year, when everything dried up, at, in the worst case, it um, had six out of every 10 rooms filled. And, and then it quickly recovered because the central workers, you know, they, um, need a place to stay and they kept doing business during the pandemic and, and as you know uh, mobile phones allow people to do a whole bunch more things and, and people working off of their phones as their main source or their watches or their laptops and um, what's happening is that these extended stake businesses are, are becoming more and more popular because people are choosing to live in one spot and, and work in a different spot <laughs> As they put their families in one spot because they got to take care of their extended families, their grandparents and things. Um, and they just take uh, different jobs and gigs elsewhere. So that's kind of where it's, where it's going. And right now, hotels are planning like one out of every hotel that they build will be an extended stay. Because just the how things have changed in, in our, our society. Okay. So they're making a lot of money. I think uh, Extended Stay America made almost $90 million during the pandemic of uh, uh, profit. So they did just fine. <laughs> so did the other mm -hmm. ones. So here, but here's the wow. problem is most people, most investors have no clue about this industry and, and they don't know how to tap into it so that they can reach um, their financial goals. That's, that's the problem. And I'm trying to expose that, you know, 
what we know is when we're playing Monopoly, you're, you played Monopoly, didn't you, Bernita? The game Monopoly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you know the game, you, you take four houses, you try to get four houses to get, and then you try to trade it in for what? For a hotel. Because the hotel has more cash flow, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we've been learning this all most of our lives to get into the hospitality industry. That's how you win the game. The person who has the most cash flow wins the game. But what I want to share with you, the shortcut here, is that there's different. Um, there's a range in the hotel industry. There's there's a certain type of hotel that's more profitable than other types of hotels. Okay, so let's just go mm -hmm. right for the most profitable section. We we know to get into the hotel, the hotel industry, and what I'm sharing with you is get into the most profitable section of the hotel industry if you're going to do it. Because if we were at a convention and we we're having drinks, what's your drink? Long Island? What are you, Bernita? What would, oh, we, what would we be having I, at the bar? I still do margaritas. I'm, okay. I'm, I like margaritas. <laughs> So we're having a margarita and we're bound around a bunch of other people who own hotels, okay? And uh, we're laughing and, and chopping it up and, and then the conversation slows down and, and someone someone later on, you know, to keep the conversation going will tell people, hey, did you, you know that it's more profitable to house one person for 30 nights than it is to house 30 people in an, one night? because there's you don't need as many maids it less overhead less wear and tear less bus boys uh more efficiency okay so let okay. be sure and that's what hotel people are telling them that's there's a solution it's it's, it's uh and we're going to do it right now we're going to do some training and talk about it it's for people who want the the largest amount of passive cash flow okay the largest amount of passive cash flow is in the is positioning for the hospitality industry into the extended stay segment, which is also the most resilient, um, proven okay. now that we've gone through a pandemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so there's like three, three uh, things that you need to know if you want to become profitable in 30 days. Have you ever, Bernita? Have you ever seen that? Uh, a person crack a safe, they they kind of listen with the stethoscope and they uh, listen for the different things, the, the tumblers to click as they're turning the combination. That's what they have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give listen you the three. It. Yeah, I'm going to give you the three combinations. OK. OK. But they're, they're real subtle. So you got to get the full. It might sound obvious, but real subtle, but it's going to allow you to, to access uh, there's a this the pent up wealth there in Long Beach, you know. There's a, okay. a lot of money okay. in Long Beach, so if you if you catch these, you can be able to access this. So so if you want to do if you want to start making money in the next thirty days, you can't even mm -hmm. close a bank loan in thirty days. But if you do these things, you're going to be able to make some cash flow. One is you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Okay, just copy successful professionals. That's how you okay. get going fast. You don't have to. Be creative. Next one is uh, you don't have to own a rental. Owning a rental is great. You can do this if you own a rental. But if you own, do you own rentals, Bernita? No, I don't. Okay. So this is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. But for those folks who are going to be listening on the replay, if you own a rental, great. But sometimes your tenant hasn't moved out. And you don't want to, I don't want to encourage anyone mm -hmm. to kick out a tenant so they can do this. So, so okay. it's perfect for both categories. Okay. And then the third secret or the third part of the combination is that you don't need a lot of money to do this. And in fact, if you if you have a lot of money, you dump a lot of money into it, it messes it all up, you know? So let's yeah. get into this. Let's get into those things. And I wanna, I wanna uh, tease out all the meaning for you. Secret number one or the first part of the combination is just to copy successful people copy the professionals. And I learned this way back when I got out of graduate school, like in uh, 94. My first job, I, I was trying to impress everybody how creative I was. And my mentor called me in, said, Al, sit down. 
this talk, and then I knew I was in trouble. He said, um, you know, you're irritating all of us. I, we, we want you to learn how we do it and then make your recommendations. You know, it's like basically you're saying, he, he, was, he was being nice about it, but he was saying, you just got out of school. <laughs> we, we're a Fortune 500 company. We've been doing this for a while. We know how to make money. Um, we hired you to make money. So why don't we need you not to be creative, but to do what works, okay? So okay. that was a great lesson for me. That was a great lesson. Mm -hmm. And now I'm sharing that story with you is because it's right now, it's, it's kind of uncertain times right now uh, as we're kind of getting out of pandemic, but anything can happen. <laughs> but it's not uncertain or scary if you're copying people who are profitable all through the, the pandemic, okay? The rest, if you're going into a small restaurant, yeah, it's scary. But if you're doing extended stays, it's not because uh, they're doing fine. You know, Tony Robbins, he's that motivation speaker guy. He, he's, his saying is, you know, you want to model someone who's already successful because success leaves clues. Okay. And, and, and that's what it is. You see this at McDonald's. I know there's McDonald's in Long Beach area. And, and there's probably oh, new yeah. ones being, being <laughs> built, right? <laughs> As we right. speak. And, and, you know, then they, they get one built, they put out a grand opening sign, and then everyone crowds it. You know, they, they, you see uh, the drive through line, it, it might block traffic. There's so many people trying to try it out because there's this pent up demand. They, they did their research and they knew that this area was underserved. So they decided to put their burger shop there. And sure enough, there's tons of people. The parking lot is filled, okay? That's a clue. That's a clue that uh, Burger King is watching. Mm -hmm. saying, you know, yeah. McDonald's spent all that money, did all that research. All we need to do is sit up across the street. That's why you see a Burger okay. King on the opposite side of the street than McDonald's. You know, mm -hmm. all they have to do is copy them. And and that's what I say about like, these, like, these national hotel chains. You can drive the parking lot, you probably can't even park because <laughs> they're filled up yeah. you know that is the clue that's the clue that they're making money and that they did you know they've been the first uh extended stay was by marriott residence in back in the 70s and they've been doing research about where to place these these uh types of hotels with kitchenettes in them since what is mm -hmm. how many years is that that's almost 50 years am i saying that right yeah, they got 50 years of research and they know how. So if, if you see an extended stay in your town, that means they did their research and uh, all you need to do is copy them. You don't have to wonder if it works or not. You know, just look at the clue that you can't that you can't park, you know, drive it at 10 o'clock at night so you can see that they did it right. They're the big corporate giant and, and, and they're making tons of money. So, What's, what's, here's, what's interesting, here's the slight thing that I want you to see. It's not only the presence of an extended stay means that you could be making money by, by uh, doing the same thing, is that you can beat them at their own game. You know, Have, have you ever heard the, uh, the story of David and Goliath, Bernita? Is that Bible story about da oh, Goliath? Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, Goliath, mm -hmm. that big old giant, right, of a guy who's been a, mm -hmm. a warrior since he was a kid. And and um, David, who's just a little shepherd boy, get into this battle. To, and um, yeah. and, and uh, David's brother says, if you're going to fight him, if you're really going to do that, you put on this armor and you carry this, you know, there's the sharpest sword. And they've outfitted him. And, and David took a few steps and said, you know, I can't, I can't move in this. Take this off me. So they, 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 just give me my slingshot. Mm -hmm. So that's what oh, he did. Yeah. He used a slingshot and he was successful because uh, of a number of things, but one, he was fighting the giant from a distance. He didn't get up close on him. <laughs> he wasn't within yeah. sword reach, you know? He was using yeah. his advantage. He was using his advantage. And that's how you fight a giant. You don't fight a giant on its own terms. You use your advantage. And these corporate, um, 
hotel chains, these extended stays, they're the giant. And, and the way you fight them is using your strengths. You don't fight them toe to toe. Uh, you set up in a more residential area that they set up a, by the freeway, <laughs> you know, because they have okay. zoning restriction. You put a washer and dryer in the unit, you know, they, they make everyone go down downstairs to this basement, whatever, to do their laundry. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, and, and and you just offer basically a better experience for a little bit less money, and and you have all the business that you can handle. If that parking lot's oh. filled and you're giving someone a deal and giving them more value, you stay okay. you stay filled. Okay, that's mm -hmm. that's what happened to me. Okay. Go ahead. You have a question? Mm, no, I don't. I, I okay. don't. I'm just following along. This is my first time. Uh, okay. Texting you. Yeah. So. Perfect. Well, I'm, that's what happened to me in, to, in 2020. I stayed filled the whole time. I, it, I know it was a pandemic, and I know a lot of Airbnb people were going out of business, but I was doing longer stays, and and people preferred to stay. In, um, they have their own privacy for a, 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 what was considered affordable and not worry about the pandemic, like, um, you know, people coming through your room, maid service and stuff like that. They, they, <laughs> I didn't have any vacancies all through 2020. And I still don't. Oh, wow. So, so that's, that's the deal. <laughs> if there's an extended stay hotel in town, they've already done the homework. All you have to do is compete against them and beat their prices and get people more and, um, you know, you have yeah. a solid, rock solid business that's pandemic proof. So that's okay. the first, that's the first insight is that you want to compete against these extended stay hotels because they absolutely 100% know what people want. And, and they also, more than we could ever know, they know how much people are willing to pay. That's how they set their prices because they, they're not guessing at their prices. They do a ton of research to price themselves. All we have to do is kind of copy their homework and, and beat okay. their prices a little oh, bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just do that. Cause they're, they're, they're proven now. I mean, they've been proven for a long time, but they've proven all through the pandemic and they're, they're profitable and, and it's even more passive than doing the, sh the one, two night stays. Okay. Cause those, those people who did like the Marriott's and the Hilton's that did the one, two night stays, they, they, um, basically locked their doors <laughs> the tour industry stopped you know but travel nurses wow. and it professionals construction workers and um, people like that contractors uh, they kept mm -hmm. they're essential workers they they can't they mm -hmm. needed a place to stay so that's how that worked out and that's a big deal because uh, if you want if you if you want to, to go into a profitable segment and do it quickly, all you have to do is aim for the extended stay industry. Okay. That, that was secret number one. Here's secret number two. You ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It This is really counterintuitive. So it's, it's like, I need you to get your stethoscope out and listen for this one. It's okay. I'll have it. <laughs> you, you don't. My you class. Good. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Secret number two, the okay. second combination is you don't okay. need to own a rental to do this because it's so profitable. You can okay. you can outfit someone else's rental, okay? If you have a rental, like I'm sitting in one of my units right now waiting, you know, not waiting, I'm just checking it out. I got someone moving in in a couple of days, but I was out here. So I said, let me do my webinar from here. Is if you don't own a rental, you simply rent someone's rental, furnish it, and get going. Okay, you don't have to own it because there's the profit margin is there. Let's talk about it. Okay, so here's how okay. you do it. This is how you you make rental income because rental passive income is passive income, right? As long as it hits your bank account, that's all that, and it's legal. It's all that matters, right? Would you agree, yeah. Bernie? <laughs> Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's legal 100%. and it hits your bank account, it's, it's income is income. You know, okay. So you 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 find a place. This is how this works. You find a place in Long Beach that's in a great area uh, of town that people want to be in. 
you know, the, the, where the coffee shops are and the, uh, this, the the cool part of town. Okay, you can do that. Okay. And then you rent a unit there. You rent an apartment to start off with, or a small okay. house or whatever you want to do. But you rent something in that proximity of that cool area, and then you put furnishings in there that that you know these uh, business travelers want. Okay. I have a whole list of those and I can help you with that. But you put the right furnishings in it. You don't overdo it. You don't spend more money than you have to, but you put the right stuff in there. And then you start marketing it. You, you market the your furnished rental that you now have pictures of online, you know, uh, different websites and offline. You talk to your friends and businesses about it and you use social media too because you... Um, People want to research okay. you, okay? Like, okay. Uh, Bernita, you ever buy something on Amazon? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, do you yeah. look at do you look at the reviews? Mm, sometimes. Oh sometimes. yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. You you see it, who has the most reviews to kind of help you make your decision? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what the social media part is: is to give people something to to see and to research. That's why that's an important component that helps you do bookings um, directly without Airbnb or anyone else, because people need to want to research you a little bit. Okay. Okay. So you, you market all all three ways, and then uh, and show people your your furnished rental, and then someone will um, quickly see you, see what you have, and they'll say, "I, I got money to stay at this one of these hotels." Um, but your place is cheaper and it's nicer. So I want to stay with you. And then they'll, they'll give you their housing allowance to stay for one month, two months, up to six months, sometimes more. Okay. They'll give you their housing allowance each month for that. And then you'll take your housing, their housing allowance, the money that you got from them, and you'll pay the rent, you'll pay the landlady, you pay the utilities, the Wi-Fi any type of insurance or whatever, landscaper, whatever, okay? So then in a perfect world, half half the money you get from your client is gonna to go towards the, the bills and the other half of the money is gonna go right to you, right into your hand, okay? okay? So you're gonna take, you're gonna now, you've just made rental income without owning the rental, simple as that. And you could take that money and, and Use it for towards your uh, financial goals, or if you're trying to retire, or trying to add to your retirement, or uh, just want to be financially independent. That's you have money now that you just created, um, helping somebody. You help you help the business traveler save money, and you made money yourself. That's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, here, let me say it again. I'm going to say it all. Um, I have this one slide that shows you that you find a, 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 a dwelling in a house or an apartment or a one bit, one bath, a studio, uh, whatever, three bit, two, three bit, two bath, what, whatever you, whatever market you're going after, you find it in a, in a strategic location. And okay. then, then you furnish it strategically. You don't overdo it like you see on TV. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't do that because that's the thing. If you overdo it, then it takes you longer to get your startup money back. Okay. So okay. Then, then you market it online, offline, and by social media, all three methods. So you have like a real marketing campaign. You just, not just one, not just Airbnb, uh, all the full, because that's where your safety is. Cause you, you want to have more people asking you to stay at your place then you have room. That's the goal. That's where your safety is, is in the marketing. And then someone's going to give you money because you create a, a, a high value opportunity for them to be more comfortable and save money. You know, a lot of times this, uh, these housing allowances are tax-free dollars. So uh, mm -hmm. someone traveling, they, they, like if it's a nurse, they have student loans that they're trying to pay off. That's why they're traveling. So you're helping them ha have extra money to pay down and um, and you're making money yourself. 
because you then you take their money, you pay the bills, and what's left over is for you. Okay, okay. that's how it works. It's rental income. Now you can, uh, you know, improve your lifestyle if that's what you want to do, or um, add right to your retirement account. You can uh, buy a new car. What are you going to do with this extra money? What's your plan, Bernina? I'm not sure right now. Okay. <laughs> You're going to buy an electric guitar and start a band, right? <laughs> I'm going to buy a Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk, let's talk about a real life example. This is her okay. shop. She's in Reno. And Reno has that, that car show called Hot August Nights every year. You see all these wow. old cars going up to Reno. Okay. And um, so that's where she is. So her story, she she flips houses. She's kind of a designer. She's good at matching matching things, making things look good. And that was her lifestyle, just flipping homes. Um, but that type of income, you make a lot of money when you sell the place, but then you don't make any more money until you uh, buy and sell up another place. So you have these big windfalls and then it dries up and these big windfalls and it dries up. But she liked that type of lifestyle. But and she was good at it. And, but one day her her friend, uh, her best friend, um, called her up and told her some bad news that her best friend um, had breast cancer and was terminally ill. And 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 that that's where things changed for Rochelle, because um, later on her friend told her said you know the, the two girls she was a single mom, she said the the girls are gonna stay with my mom with with their with grandmother. And um, but she asked Rochelle to to help sponsor because one of them was in had gymnastic lessons, and the other one had dance lessons, ballet lessons. She asked Rochelle to cover those costs for her. That would be a big relief on her. She didn't, you know, who wants to die and leave their kids, right? Um, she was she was really worried about. It. So Rochelle said yes. She said I will absolutely do that. Um, absolutely. But later she realized that it was going to be really expensive, <laughs> how expensive it was to do that. So she's like, I got to get a job, but I, she didn't want a job. That's just like that lifestyle. So that's when she reached out to me. She said, um, said Al, you know, I, some of my friends you coach and they're doing well. And I, I have this problem. She told me about her, her best friend. And she says, you know, I, I, I want to serve, um, longer term stays. I don't want that sense of panic all the time. I don't want a job either. <laughs> uh, I don't want to be on this all the time. She says, I want to serve business travelers. And I told her, absolutely, I could do that. And she told me she was like a financial, a, a emotional wreck because she was dealing with her her friends, uh, losing her friend and all, all those things, funerals and all that stuff. So I said, okay, I just need to just follow this checklist follow these six steps. And, and she went on to say, um, I've, ha I've had courses before, I bought them before, and for some reason it just didn't turn out. Either I didn't have the resources or the timing was wrong, or you know, the, these courses just don't work out for me. So I said to her, um, what's different about us is that, that um, it's kind of like The Biggest Loser, that, that TV show where people have that tremendous weight loss. You, see, you ever seen that on TV, Bernita? The Biggest Loser? Yes, I've seen it. Before. Yeah, mm -hmm. I said, that, well, the, the reason that those people can lose all that weight and have that big transformation is because mm -hmm. they have a coach watching them, working with them, and then they have that mm -hmm. peer pressure group. They have a, an accountability support group. So they're not okay. doing it by themselves. And so like, okay. that's the key to getting big transformation is you get a, um, like if you want a straight A's in school, you get a, a tutor and a, and a study group, right? It's mm -hmm. always the same. If you're trying to kick a, kick a, a habit, you get a, a, a coach and a, you join a support group like alcohol economics or something. You have to have both mm -hmm. of those things together. That's nearly guarantees or, or really dramatically changes the odds of you accomplishing the goal, having those things. Mm -hmm. So I told her that. She's like, yeah, that's what I need. You know, if you, if, if you ever try for a, a really, really big goal and you didn't make it, it's probably because you didn't have a support group 
and, and a coach. That's, pr okay. that's kind of all the time. So she said, yep, she thought she could do that, thought it would work. So she she signed up and uh, started going through the six steps, the, the worksheets and everything. And she found this little house that, that was just outside of where they hold hot August nights. And the reason I wanted her to get close to that area is because the hotels triple their 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 rates during that time. <laughs> you know, they get because of that car show, they know they can charge whatever they want. So we got in the proximity of it, and then she started furnishing the place. And I, I was warning her about furnishing it. And um, <laughs> here, let me take a sip. Okay. Because this always gets me in trouble telling people about this. Mm -hmm. Is that when you're um, well, I was I was interviewed for the CNBC's uh, pilot on short-term rentals. I was they were interviewing me to be the host of the show, and I was I was excited about it. I was really excited about it. I was I was dreaming about you know my kids bragging about me at school and things like that. Me being stopped in the grocery store. I thought, okay, this is great. So the interview came, it was a Zoom call. We were talking, it was, I knew all the answers because I've been doing this and coaching people for so long. And they asked me, he said, Al, do you know how to design? Do you know how to buy nice furniture and, and um, nice linen and stuff like that? And I was like, yeah, you know, absolutely. Because I'm, 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 I'm traveling all the time, giving speeches and things. I stay at different Airbnbs that I, and I collect these ideas. I, I know exactly what to do, but I don't recommend people do it that way <laughs> because I recommend people uh, be resourceful and keep their startup costs at a minimum and, and, and really avoid um, spending a lot of money, even if they have it. Because I don't think you're really profitable until you pay back your startup costs and, and, and then you're profitable money after that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, because some people that I stay with, I'm always staying and talking to different hosts, is they, they mm -hmm. put all this money into it and it might take them two years before they get all that money back in profit to pay themselves back. But mm -hmm. oftentimes, if people are doing these really short stays, weekend stays, two, three night stays, they get burned out before two years. <laughs> so they really don't make, they really don't make any money at all by spending all that money on a startup. So that's what okay. I was telling them. And that was pretty much ended my interview <laughs> because, mm. because they, they wanted to sell the commercials. That was the whole goal of the show is to sell commercials and all these sponsors and these product placements. And I wasn't going to recommend that because I think it's the wrong way to go. I think you got to actually run a business more than a TV show. So I didn't get it, okay. but it's, it's for the best. Is for the best. <laughs> but anyway, Rochelle, with, with her, she was um, being resourceful. She was getting used furniture. She was using Facebook Marketplace and um, these different apps that offer up and get things free and borrowing things from her friends to get set up. She borrowed a bedroom set, an extra bed from someone's guest room and um, got the place set up nicely. And so then the next part was for her to do the, the I think step th uh, four is to start marketing the place. And this is the really the key. It's because um, okay. I, I want you to think of marketing as a three-legged stool. Um, there's okay. an offline leg and an online leg and the third leg is social media. Now you can stand on a three-legged stool. It actually holds weight. So that's what I think is like when a hard time comes, okay. this thing can hold up. Oftentimes, we and we really seen during the pandemic in 2020, if people were on a one-legged stool, they were just doing Airbnb, just one leg. And then hard times came and they toppled over, went out of business. They didn't know how to find a client for themselves. They were so reliant on, on Airbnb to give them or recommend someone to them. If Airbnb wasn't recommending anyone to them, <laughs> they went out of business. So that's why okay. I have a trademark process of, on how to do all three so um, you're not waiting to have someone to ask you to dance. You, you know how to ask people to dance so you stay, you stay busy. That's, that's super okay. important. 
That's the safety part of this whole thing. There's a saying that if you can give someone a fish and, and feed them for a day, you know, that's that's what Airbnb does. They, they're they really good at making it easy so that you can find a client. But the saying goes on, if you teach someone to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. And that is what, that's my life's mission. And that's why I don't apologize. I teach people how to feed themselves, how to become financially free by um, copying what works, you know, and what's what's works in a recession and works during a pandemic and how, how to um, find clients like that for the essential workforce. So what she, okay. what Rochelle did is she found a, a guy who's doing transportation project. He's in town for 10 months. He was a superintendent. Mm -hmm. And then um, she was negotiating with him. She asked me, she asked me how, how, how much should I charge him? She, I don't know how much to charge him. She said her rent was $850. So she wanted to charge him twice as much she said, should I charge him $1,700? I said, no, no. You, you charge him more. You, you, you charge him at least at least $2,100. You know, his housing allowance that he gets is at least $100 a night. So each month he has a housing budget of about $3,000. And she said, no. She said, I feel like I'm gouging him. I don't want to be greedy. I just, I want to just, you know, make a fair deal. I, I told her, Rochelle, you got to trust me because, you know, I was, a tra I was traveling as a bridge engineer, I would travel. I know this business. <laughs> and I know you, you um, he's got a $3,000 budget. You, you want to charge at least $2,100, if not more. So she didn't want to do it, but she did. She, she, was, she was coachable, which is the key. And, and she, she recommended what I suggested and he snapped it up and she was, <laughs> she was kind of worried that she went too low because he snapped, he knew he had a good deal. So that's how she started creating $900 a month on a property she didn't even own by, by doing that. And then she was wow. like, wow, you know, she accomplished her goal because she can cover the cost of uh, gymnastic lessons and ballet lessons now. You know, that was her financial goal. So she accomplished it in her first deal, which is, which is amazing. And I'm gonna tell you how, uh, she went on to do more, but there's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you in just a second. But yeah, she was super happy that that monkey was off her back and, and that she could actually uh, do what she promised her friend to do. So that was a that was a big deal. Now here's some numbers of this. Her client pays her two thousand one hundred dollars, okay, a, a month, and, and she pays the landlord eight hundred and fifty dollars, and the landlord's happy. The landlord thinks the place looks great. She's been taking care of it. It's well maintained. He's extremely happy. And, and then she pays her utilities and the internet and landscapers about $350 of expenses on top of rent. And that leaves a profit left over in the bank for her to use towards of $900, okay? So she, she's able to cover those gymnastic lessons and that's a big deal. But here's, the, here's a little, thing. we need that stethoscope again. For, cause, okay. Because she pays a landlord $850 and her profit is $900. She makes more money than the landlord and she doesn't even own the property. Okay. She makes $50 more than the landlord. And if we were to look at the landlord, you would say, okay, the landlord's taking in $850 of rent, but they got to pay property taxes. We know that. They got to pay insurance and probably a mortgage too. So they, they may at best have four hundred dollars left over. You know, she's making nine hundred dollars, and after their expenses, they're making about four hundred dollars. <laughs> but here's the thing: if that landlord was doing the same thing Rochelle was doing and doing furniture extended stay rentals, they would be making that nine hundred dollars that that she was making. So that they could be making thirteen hundred dollars, which is three times more than they're making as a traditional landlord. So that's what's amazing, is instead of going out and buying more rentals, all they needed to do is make a decision to operate their traditional rental differently and make three times more. So that's, that's how I retired, is I turned my regular rentals 
into furnished rentals and off of just a small eight unit apartment complex, not a hundred rentals, <laughs> but just a small apartment complex that's easy to manage. I was able to walk away from my civil engineering job. That's how I did it. That's an amazing thing. And it gets even more amazing. So, so here's the thing. You don't have to own a rent. You don't have to come up with a down payment. It's expensive where you live in Long Beach. I know that. I know things, okay. everything's like 500,000 and more. So if you were to come up with 20% of that, that's about $100,000 right there, isn't it? Am I doing the math right? No, maybe a little less, but let's see. Uh, yeah, 10,000, uh, yeah, 100,000. So mm -hmm. that, that take, not everyone has that money sitting around, <laughs> you know? But the good news is, is you don't need that down payment. All you need to do is go rent someone else's property and turn it, furnish it, and, and market it into an uh, to the to the essential workforce, and make a profit. May most likely more than that landlord is making. Okay, so the, the thing is, you can quickly, you can very quickly rent a place, and then you can skillfully market it, not just by Airbnb, because that's wobbly. We we know that so many people got flushed out of business but by mm -hmm. on, offline social media, as well as online. And, and uh, in Long Beach, in fact, um, there, there's some city ordinances, some laws that says uh, you, you have to do uh, 30 days and longer to be legal. Did you know that? Okay. No, I didn't. I they, didn't know that. They banned, they banned the short-term stays because they were competing okay. against the, the lobbyists. Yeah, okay. well, they did that in Anaheim. I haven't read the ordinance for Long Beach, but I, I'm imagining it's in the same proximity, San Diego, all those bigger cities. Um, they they, mm -hmm. they they want to collect the tax dollars. Uh, so oh, okay. Yeah, so, okay, so let's, let's do a quick summary. If you if you want to start making money in the next 30 days, if, if, if we didn't have that time frame, um, and if the pandemic wasn't going, I would suggest some different things. But if you want to make money quickly, you you, you, you just compete against these extended stay hotels in your area. They're already proven, they're profitable, and they're pa more passive than um, regular Airbnb. And the secret number two is that all you need to do is control the rental property and to make cash flow, you don't have to own it. You say a, a lease agreement, or a joint venture agreement, or a, other some other type of document. All you have to do is get that signed, and so you, that you can control the property, and you can start making money. Okay, that's the second thing. You don't need a down payment. Is that good news? You don't have to have a oh, hundred thousand dollars sitting around. <laughs> okay. Oh. Here's the third okay. one. Here's the third part of the combination. Is that you don't need a lot of money to do this. Like I was sharing with you before, if you put a lot of money into it, it takes you a longer time to, to, to get, pay yourself back for your startup cost. Okay. The goal is to be resourceful and actually pay yourself back. And then that money after you paid yourself back is new money um, that you can use for your lifestyle, to improve your lifestyle. Let's talk about this. Let's talk. Let's keep going, Rachel, because it cost her four thousand one hundred dollars to set up. That was her first month's rent, security deposit, and then she her furnishings. Four thousand one hundred. That's a small, um, not much, not much at all. You could put that right on a credit card if you wanted to, but she paid for that. And her her profit each month is nine hundred dollars. So if we do the division, she gets all her money back in four and a half months. Just okay. four and a half months, she gets all her startup money back into her pocket. And that's what changed her life. She realized that I got my money back. I can go do another one of these things. You know, I can keep making money mm -hmm. off of that first place. And I got my, my $4,100 back in my pocket. I can go do this again and, 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 you know, have two of these done before the year's out. And then I was teasing her because I, uh, because I was been telling her all along, I said, Rochelle, 
someone would have gave you a small loan. <laughs> someone would have loaned you $4,000 and you could have paid them back in four and a half months and you didn't really need any money at all to do this. That's that's the subtle, that you need your stethoscope to, to understand. If you borrow, if you borrow money and you pay it back super quick, um, and that you really, if you can, the way I consider profit is after you paid yourself back, then you make profit, or after you pay back the startup loan, then you're profitable. So it really doesn't matter. You can you can do this over and over again and over again and create um, an income so that you can put together to accomplish your financial goal, whatever it is. It's kind of like a, you're, you're close to Lego land down there. <laughs> it's kind of like a Lego, you know, they, they've been engineered. Those Legos have been engineered. You stack them together and you can create some really big things. That's the that's same thing with, with these furnished rentals on extended stays. You, you, you can stack them together to accomplish your, whatever financial goal you have. For me, it was being a, a full-time dad and um, you know, part-time investor. So I was accomplished that and um, mm -hmm. you know, that's enough for me, <laughs> being able to be home. And I was there for the first kiss and everything, you know? So oh, okay. I'm, I'm, oh, I wasn't watching it. I just heard about it uh, after mm -hmm. it happened. I was the first person to hear about it, all that type of stuff. But then, anyway, this, let's, let's, okay. play, let's do the math. Let's do the math real quick. Let's say, say, say um, Bernita, am I saying your name right? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. say, say you do one of these things. You rent someone's place and you do this, um, you create rental income without income. But instead of like Rochelle, let's say instead of the $900 Rochelle was doing, let's say you only made $500 a month. Okay. So if you did that, well, you have a go, go ahead. I have a question. Okay. When you, when you talked about the 4,000 setup costs? Yeah, setup costs. Did that include uh, inventory? Yes, or... it did. Okay. She was being... So it included... mm -hmm. Yep. So the rent? Yeah. Mm. Rent, deposit. Furniture? Uh-huh. Furniture? Uh-huh. Inventory, like... Right. You know, now, so, okay, she, I just wanted to know. That's mm -hmm. right. And then, now, how did she do it then, for so little? She did it because mm -hmm. yeah, she, was, I she was shopping for deals. Okay. You know, because she wanted to break even quickly. And, and she was also, um, uh, her friends were helping her out. And she was uh -huh. us, using some of her own things at her own home. She was just mm -hmm. being really resourceful. And we were... You know, oh. our, we have a private uh, private group that kind of meant uh, our private Facebook group. We 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 were cheering her along. We're you know the she have a question about what to buy, and someone in the group would be able to answer all of her questions if I couldn't. And um, and she mm -hmm. was it was you know we when people are watching you, you kind of want to show off. You want to show what kind of great deals you're getting. So so mm -hmm. all that helped all that work together to keep her startup costs down. Mm -hmm. And what was her client again? Her client was a traveling. traveling he was a, a superintendent for a, a a road paving company. Oh, road paving. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. The, so construction workers, iron workers. When I was building a bridge, it, it would take about ten months. So I was a I was a um, civil engineer, project manager. I I I needed furnished rentals for about ten months. Okay. okay. And then when you talk about just look for, find a rental. Well, um, you, you, know, you, you want to find a strategic. Well, you want to okay. use your street smarts. Okay. Because so, you know where the, you know. you know where a good area is. And if you can get on the fringe of that good area, that would be the best. Uh, so location. Yeah. Yeah. So location, location. And then the, um, the owners, the uh, property owners, um, are you talking about single family homes or apartments or which one is better? You know, you know I, I, the, model. The, the bigger, the big ones have more cash flow associated with them. You know, they has, okay. has bigger monthly checks, but it's going to cost you more to get into it. 
because you got to okay. furnish three rooms and things. So I oh. I always coach people just to, um, you know, go to junior high school before you go to college. You know, just okay. start small. You know, you can do okay. that. You know, you can do okay. a, a compete against a, a hotel room, and All then right. and then take some time to learn the business. Okay. And once you do that and learn how to market without Airbnb so that you really know how to market so that you're not waiting for someone to call you, you know how to stir things up and get a client, you know, how to, okay. how to once you know how to do um, that, I, then you can, you can fill just about anything. You could do a house, a boat or whatever, because you know how to market. And also, you know, what your area, the things that in, in in Long Beach, what people want in Long Beach. Okay. So that just takes All right. it takes a it takes a minute to, to do that. You can't just jump up and rent five okay. of these things. <laughs> you have to, mm -hmm. you have to, okay. know, so, yeah. So it's a research yeah. into it, huh? Okay. Well that's you know, that's just the truth. <laughs> I wish I could tell you it was easy yeah. and that you could just add the water, but you you, you mm -hmm. have to it, it takes it takes uh, some time to to build a reputation, at least a couple months. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. 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 All right. So let's say you're making a profit of just five hundred dollars per month off your first one, which mm -hmm. is which is reasonable. My my average is about seven hundred and fifty or so per per uh, arbitrage. So I own some okay. and I I go rent some of people's property. When I when I rent other people's property, it's about 700, 750 or so. If it's my property, mm -hmm. it's about a thousand, twelve hundred dollars just a profit. Okay. So 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 let's say five hundred dollars just to be really conservative. So you do one, and and then um, let's say you know the third month people are, are sending me emails and saying they're bored, they want to do another one. That's why I get all the time. So I I ask them some questions, I test them. If they can pass that, I give them my blessing. I say, go and do, do another one. And what happens, sure enough, after they get the hang of their area and, and they start hearing what people want and they build a relationship, they have four within the first year, which is not, it's like one every three months. It's not very difficult at all. And so, so that turns in from $500 a month, of, you know, that's your, that's your profit. To two thousand dollars, you know, four of these pretty much easy to do. Two thousand dollar profit per month. That's like real, real money now. Mm -hmm. you know, that's that's covers okay. definitely covers three car payments and you know your food and you cover a lot. That's a that's, that's yeah yeah that would really help Good you. Money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean you're not Sounds a millionaire. Good. You're not a millionaire, but that gives you some breathing <laughs> room, start. right? Yeah. Yeah. Good start. Yeah. Here's a uh, there's a case of Alicia. She, she I met her in Virginia. I was uh, speaking um, at an event and I was talking about extended stays. And she, I got off stage and she rushed up to me uh, and she mm -hmm. said, Al, "You know, Al, I'm so excited to meet you. I, I I've been I, I'm ready to start my family." And I <laughs> and I was almost blushed. I was like, "You know, my wife is not going to co-sign on on me helping you with that." <laughs> so she oh, turned beet oh. red. It was pretty funny. <laughs> but she was newly, she was a newlywed, and she wanted some passive income so that she could focus on being a mom. She she wanted to oh. cover her part of the bills, and um, passively, uh -huh. and and to focus on being a mom. So, so uh, she told me through mm -hmm. with flipping homes as well. She, she had a little crew, and they were pretty good at it. And I told her, you know, it typically takes. 30 days for people to get their first one up and going. And, mm -hmm. but I told her, since you have a crew, I'm going to give you 15 days. So you got a 15 day challenge. And she was like, Oh, but she said, okay, I'll, I'll try. I'll try to do that. So sure enough, she, she went through all my materials and, and everything. And she got going in 14 days. So she did it. And, and then she wrote me this note, you know, um, four months afterwards, she said, thank you for pushing me out of my comfort zone. And she thanked me over a lot for answering her questions. And then she said she had four of them, you know, 
and, and she's making a profit of $2,131 a month. That's what the screenshot shows. Um, so she did it. She, she's like, you you know, you change, change your life, be, be a little more salesy, Al. And I'm like, I'm not very salesy, but this works. This does help people accomplish their financial goal. Her financial goal was to pay for diapers and her other bills, you know, and, and that's what I allowed her to do. Her, her daughter's like one years old now, and um, it's a, it's a, it completely changed her life. Um, there's more on that okay. later, but she's gone on to, to use this technique to, to uh, do a lot more advanced stuff. But you can make a lot more money than $2,000 a month. You okay. could, so what this slide here shows is that if, if you're, um, we're going to have the profits that you make on the, on the vertical axis going up and down, and then a timeline in months going down the, the uh, horizontal axis. And what it shows you that if you do one of these rental arbitrages and you keep your full-time job and you don't spend the profits, you just let the profits build up in the bank, then about month four or so, if, you know, if say you start, mm -hmm. of course, you're going to start with like $5,000. I should say that. And then you, you add your profits, you don't spend it. You kind of like Amazon. Amazon didn't spend its profit, it kept reinvesting in itself. So that's what you do. Month four, you pick up another rental arbitrage or you create another furnished rental and you let the profits go back to the bank, okay? You build up that bank account. And then month seven, um, since you have two rentals working for you, you can build up that account faster. Month seven, you go get your third one. You take the money out of the bank, not sure any money. You keep working your full-time job. Now you essentially have rentals buying or other rentals for you. Not buying, but setting up other rentals for you. So it starts to grow mm -hmm. exponentially. So that okay. by month 23, you don't need to expand anymore. You can start paying yourself a $10,000 per month profit and just within just two years, mm -hmm. you know? Could you cover all your expenses with, with $10,000? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. So essentially, yeah. I mean, you're not, a, you're not a billionaire, but you could, you did create mm -hmm. a retirement income for yourself in just two but, years. Uh-huh. You didn't have to work 30 income. years. Yeah, you didn't have to work 20 yeah. years, 30 years to create a re retirement income. You mm -hmm. just focused on, learning the craft and, and not letting and reinvesting um, and letting these things grow for you. So that's a huge changer. That's what I did. I went a little faster and I, I did it uh, publicly. This is show that it works. But there's this guy named Ethan. Uh, he's in the Bay Area and, and um, he's an uh, HR manager for a bunch of tech firms. And he was mm -hmm. busy all the time, but he liked the idea. He, he has two daughters, just like I do. And he felt like he was just growing up without them. Or they were growing up without him. He wanted to be more involved in their lives. I remember he saying, he's like, you know, uh, you, you go from their 10 year birthday party to sweet 16 to college graduation to walking them down the aisle. It's just a blur, you know? It just mm -hmm. moves on. You can miss the whole thing. It happens really fast. So he was uh, following me around I, I was speaking in different places in the San Francisco area. I saw him like three times in a row and he would say, oh, great presentation and so on and so forth. I said, Ethan, why aren't you getting, <laughs> you obviously like this. Why aren't you starting? He's like, oh, I need a few more. I just need a little bit more information. And I was like, Ethan, you got, you're surrounded by status days. You know, it takes more than information. Information by itself is never enough. You need to have some boldness with you. You just start. But I understood mm -hmm. that Ethan was like me. He was, he was, I, I had the same thing, issue in my head. Is if you can imagine an elephant um, with a rope around his neck and uh, a stake in the ground, that's how, they, that's how they train elephants to stay put. They put a rope around their neck, their rope, and, and they stake them on the ground. When, when elephants are small, um, that mm -hmm. rope can hold them in place. You know, they, um, the trainer puts a rope around their neck, stakes them off. That elephant pulls to the right, can't get loose. The elephant looks at these bigger elephants with ropes around their necks and sees that they can't, they can't move. They're not going anywhere either. So pretty soon, that mm -hmm. elephant believes it, you know, and, and quits and, and has that memory of failure. 
and and that's mm -hmm. what the Ethan he was he Ethan was doing so much more complicated stuff during the day than than what we're talking about. Just like elephants, they they pull two or three thousand two you know t pounds. <laughs> they pull a couple of tons during the day pulling um, tree stumps out of the ground, but yet putting a little rope and this little tiny thing um, that they learned to believe this self limiting belief. They, what, how an elephant can get out of that is have his trainer or someone call them out while that rope is around their neck. You know? So that's why I was telling Ethan, I'm like, Ethan, you know other people that are traveling the world work do this that I've helped. You, you got to let me help you. And I was able to talk him into it, um, doing it, because because the expense of doing nothing is really costly. You, you're losing um, time with your, your life and your, your memories and your there's people depending on you to create passive income so that you could be around for them and that you want to provide for. You know, doing nothing is really expensive. Anyway, mm -hmm. he he started following the six steps, and and he 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 started finding these houses in San Francisco in San Bernardino. They had like three, two bedrooms and a bathroom and a kitchen upstairs, and a bedroom and a bathroom downstairs. He would add a kitchenette to the downstairs unit. And then he would rent the downstairs to one business traveler, the upstairs to a different business traveler, and it was just a huge profit maker. Yeah, that's part of wow. part of the worksheets we go through. We look at all those things. So he started um, making a lot of money in the San Francisco area. I asked him, I said, Ethan, what helped you um, get going? Because you were stuck. He said, what should I tell people? He said, tell people about the law of diminishing intent by Jim Rohn. He kind of came up with that. He said, the longer you wait to do which something you should be doing now, the greater the odds are that you'll never actually do it. And he couldn't bear uh, it, it, the, all the time he was spending at work and, and not being around his family. They're growing up without him. You know, mm -hmm. there, there's this, this life here is about, um, you know, eagles, this is this big eagle, they're majestic. They're at the top of the food chain. There's nothing that hunts the eagle. Um, and they fly faster and better and more majestic than any other bird. And but an eagle that a baby eagle that doesn't see another eagle fly um, will never meet their full potential. Their chances of reading the potential have diminished. You know, if you're if you're always around people who are counting down to retirement, um, <laughs> and you're not around people that are actually doing these things, it, it's hard to live your potential. So when Ethan invested in, in my course, I started coaching him, started showing the ins and outs of my business because he's not far away. I'm, I'm in Sacramento, about an hour and a half away from each other. And he's able to see it and understand it and see how doable it is. And he created Bay Pillow. That's the name of his company. He makes about $15,000 a month through this. There's $180,000 a year on his terms, working a few hours a, a week. And he's got plenty of time with his daughters now. Um, they're, during the pandemic, they were traveling around um, as a bubble, as a family, to different Airbnbs since the kids are homeschool. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. It completely changed his life. Just like Jay here is his next one. Jay grew his business up to $600,000 a year. He is my first mm -hmm. student. That's why I started coaching. Is because he reached out to me. And I didn't feel like sharing all the secrets. And, and then I started feeling, um, but he was pretty persistent because he wanted to uh, live abroad. <laughs> That's what he wanted to do. So, but I, and I didn't want to share and I started feeling greedy and kind of, uh, I didn't want to become that person. So I started coaching him. He's up to $600,000 a year, hired a team in Philippines and a handyman in uh, San Jose area. And um, he just travels full time now, you know? That's the third insight is, is that you don't need a lot of money to do this. You, you can re use a reinvestment strategy. Uh, uh, what you need is a, a, a pr something that's proven and bankable that can hold up during a pandemic that people understand and there's like a real need for it, <laughs> like extended stay rentals. You know? The system is proven um, doubly over now that there's a pandemic. Okay, It gives you the results you can bank on it. That's the three things. It's that the first secret is that you just compete against the extended stays in your town. If you have those 
those extended resonance and extended stay America and those other brands just that's the research has already been done. You can never do any more research than they've done. They've got PhDs and computer models. <laughs> if they're there, it's proven. And then the second secret is just, you, all you need to do is control a rental. You don't have to own it to create cash flow. If you have your own rental, perfect, get going. If you don't have one, uh, all you have to do is rent one in a strategic location and know how to market to keep it filled. And the third thing is, please don't put a lot of money into it because it just because if, if you put a lot of money into it, you try to do all this yourself and you start going to those free forums and listening to other people, you end up doing regular Airbnb and you burn out and you quit in two years before you recoup your investment. That's a tragedy. I've seen that. Um, that's just a flat out tragedy. <laughs> so extended stays is definitely way to go. Okay, so there we go. That's those are the three <laughs> secrets. And you could try all this on your own, and and you could try to do what's taking me years. And you know, I've been working at this since 2014 to figure out mm -hmm. all this stuff. Or you can just you can skip the trial and error and just copy what works. And, and uh, my six step system has been around for a long long time. It works, mm -hmm. and you can just start making money. You know, the the, the program's called Extended Stage for Landlords. And um, here's mm -hmm. what you get. The, you get the six step system. The first step is an overview to help you stay focused on the extended stay hotels industry, not Airbnb, what's going on in Airbnb. That's kind of the freshman team. You wanna focus on the varsity team, the professionals. So that's a different way of thinking. Step two is, is you understand your market's potential what's going on. Usually people traveling these days, they're either tourists or they're, they fall into the travelers category, the business traveler category. And the tourists cause all the headaches, that causes all the, the headlines and the, you hear about the parties and stuff. So just market to the travelers, <laughs> the, the business travelers, the, the serious travelers, that's the potential of your market. The third one is how to furnish it. You know, I have a, a checklist this, you can click on it, all the whole thing and order everything off Amazon, or you can hand this whole checklist to someone else to go buy stuff for you. That's the thing. And the fourth okay. step is, is marketing. You know, that's the key, mm -hmm. you know, the three-legged tool, that's my proprietary system. It's all on a checklist too. So you can follow that checklist and learn how to do it, or you can hand the checklist to your uh, partner or to your assistant and have them work with me to make sure you're marketing mm -hmm. both ways, offline, online, and social, okay? That's so important. Then the fifth step is the transition. Some people listening on the replay, they may be um, existing Airbnb hosts, you know, and living with that sense of panic all the time. And one way to transition is to start serving traveling nurses. So I have a module in there about exactly what, how to furnish your place so that they want it, how to quickly find them and how to price your place properly so that you maximize your profit margin. And then once you know all those things, then step six is you can create cash flow without ownership, how to put that marketing and that strategy of furnishing onto someone else's property and, and start turning that into a moneymaker. Exactly what to say to landlords, I have a script for that. All these worksheets just about for whatever you need so you can actually um, calculate what's going on. I'm creating a systematic framework so that you can repeat it over and over again, just like a Lego, so you can stack it because it's, everything has been engineered and proven. So those are the six steps. The value of that, that system, this information pack, is $3,500 just to, to create that kind of cash flow. But like I was telling Ethan, the information by itself is not enough. You need a coach and a support group to come along with you. That's what the first bonus is. It's a mastermind and a, a group coaching that I, I do and I oversee. So you can actually be able to learn from other people who are doing extended state rentals all over the world and all over the United States. We all get together on Facebook and, and trade uh, updates and encourage each other along. And I'm always coaching that group. I'm showing you what I'm learning, what I'm doing, and I'm giving you daily updates on, on uh, the, the things I'm reading so that you can read them yourself and find out what the industry is going. So 
So that has no expiration date. <laughs> and that's a daily exercise for me. So that the value of that is $1,997. The second bonus, because again, information by itself is not enough. You need to interact with people is email support. It comes to me and my team um, to answer your questions to get you going, especially when you start. You know, you have a ton of questions. You need fast answers. Otherwise, you, you lose momentum. So email support, second bonus, is, is um, whatever you need, as much as you need it, to get you going. That's a $1,997 value. And the third one's the biggie. This is the big one. It's, it's private coaching and, and resources, too. Like, we're going to do a one-on-one where I'm going to understand your situation and create this personalized action plan for you to follow for your situation in your city with your ordinances so you know exactly what to do. And then uh, I've done this for other people and they, they're they like, well, I need uh, an addendum. I need a stamp of lease agreement. I need things. I call it the resource pack. So you have resources, all these different resources that I've created for people, how to raise money, all of those things going back to 2014. So you have all the tools you could possibly need and, and I generally, I help people make an extra $500 a month extra by tuning them up during this conference call easily. Just the legal, the legal stuff alone is, is worth this, you know. But, but also in this third bonus, um, give me access to my marketing school. I have a marketing school for extended stays. It's all about how to market more advanced marketing because the marketing is the safety of this. So that I sell that oh. course for almost six hundred dollars itself. Okay. Oh. So this okay. third bonus is a value of two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. So all that together, the six step system three 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 thousand five hundred. The bonus is one thousand nine hundred ninety seven. Email support one thousand nine hundred seven. The third bonus was is really packed with everything, every tool you need. It's 2,500. So the total value, not that I'm going to charge you this, I think it's worth it, is $9,994. It's a serious package. Okay. I think it's absolutely worth it. Again, we're trying to create this cash flow of $10,000 a month. Okay. So I know it's, it's absolutely worth $9,000 for this package. And, and people have gone on to create $10,000 a month. We have countless of that. So, but this, it's like, like, uh, you think about like school, you know, college, you have to invest first <laughs> and then you get the benefit. So there is an investment. And that's what Warren Buffett, his best advice is, you know, the, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you earn. And this is going to be some powerful stuff. And it's, it's, uh, But I'm not charging you that $9,994. I think it's absolutely worth it. And I'm going to give it to you risk-free. I'm going to talk to you about this guarantee in a second. But but today, is, is I'm bringing it down, offering it, and you see it on my website all the time, for $1,997 is, is my, my regular asking price, okay? Then here's the thing. Here's the summary of it. Is housing people who are on extended stay work assignments is the key to creating passive income. You need to reach your financial goals without burning out, okay? And that's only attainable through the six step system, going through all six steps and with coaching and support, you'll, you'll get there, okay? But here's, here's the gift. The gift is, um, I'm not gonna take questions here just yet. The, the, mm -hmm. You're gonna have the six steps, which is kind of the map of how to get to the place. The, the bonuses is support to get there. The resources to make sure you have all the equipment. You can get it at extendedstatelandlord.com. But here's the thing, I got a discount code for you. I'm bringing the price down even more, but there's a limited time on this discount. Okay, it's gonna expire at nine Pacific time tonight. The discount code for 15% off for today only. I got three of them available. Is um, discount code is 032521. It's kind of like the date, 0325. Two one. So what you what you do that brings the price down to one thousand six hundred ninety seven dollars, which is a, which is an incredible deal. I feel really good about that. I feel that's good. But here's the money back guarantee. 
110% money back guarantee because I'm so confident in this. That's if, if you go through the full system, I'm going to guarantee that you're going to make three times your investment in the first year, or I'm going to refund your, your money, um, 110% of your money. Okay, so you even make interest. There's no way to lose money with this. The only way to lose money is you not to do anything, to purchase it and not do anything. And if you're leaning that way, please don't invest because I, I want to give you a return on your money. Okay, so the key is that you have to follow this five week easy schedule. It means you actually have to do the work. <laughs> and But I give you three days to review the course. You can order this thing. You got three days to review it. If you don't like it, just return it. There's absolutely no way to lose money. Go to extendedstaylandlord.com, extendedstaylandlord.com. You click on the button to enroll, and then that's, there's a thing called add coupon code. That's where you add that code 032521 in there. And um, that's how you do it. And it, I know I've been talking for a long time, <laughs> but there's really three things you can do now. You can do nothing at all. And, um, and a year from now, how will things look for you? Or if you're happy with that, if you can bear that, then great. If that looks like you're just completely worse or the same situation you're in now, which is unbearable, which is unbearable, um, you can do nothing. <laughs> or you could listen to all the free podcasts. You can read everything on Bigger Podcasts. You can read all the books and you can... Um, Listen, listen, you know, read all my YouTube videos and just sit there all day, watch my YouTube videos. And, and possibly you might make it. After some trial and error and mistakes and everything, you might be able to make it on your own if you do all of that. Or just, you can just let me help you. The third thing, just let me help you get going and, and, and invest and, and save all the mistakes, okay? So it's at extendedstatelandlord.com. Hey, there, do you have any questions, Bernina? Let me know if you have any questions. Um, um, well, I do have questions, but I don't know if it's, you know, if I should ask right now. But yeah, um, now's I, the time. I'm gonna stop. Uh, well, I, I, okay. Uh, I think about finding uh, landlords or finding okay. uh, landlords to to rent from. Okay. And I'm I'm like thinking, well, what tool do do I use? Do I use, you know, rental meter or do I look in the newspaper? What a Craigslist? Yeah. Uh, you can use, you know, the, the the biggest it used to be Craigslist when I started in 1996. <laughs> it was Craigslist. <laughs> now it's Facebook okay. Marketplace. You can find them easily oh. on Facebook Marketplace and, and online. Mm -hmm. Even management companies, once you're once you get one under your belt. You can you can talk to management companies when we start meeting in public, you know, after this pandemic's over, you're going to have local mm -hmm. um, landlord and real estate meetups. And mm -hmm. you just show up there and there are burnt out landlords there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and you're going to talk to okay, you're going to talk to them and, and some of them are going to say no and some people will mm -hmm. say yes. So can you if you can handle someone saying no and not quit. If you can do mm -hmm. that, then then you're on your way. Okay. Okay. And then uh, I, I was thinking about the uh, the joint uh, contract. You're making yeah. a joint contract. Yeah. Um, do you get into that once you, the the uh, the program? Yeah, I have uh, all kinds of partnering opportunities where someone may use uh, some of their retirement dollars. You know, some people have these self-directed retirement accounts, um, mm -hmm. especially with a, just a little bit of money in it, um, you can grow their retirement account and um, and you do all the work, and, but you have all the money you need there. Also, you know, uh -huh. you could buy a, a junker car for $5,000. I think any almost, almost any high school student puts together $5,000 to do it. Lots of people will, will loan that for you if you're inter interested in that or... Um, but the, the key is, is knowing mm -hmm. how to market. That's, that drives, that's the engine for all of this. Because if you know how to market, then you could just uh, work with okay. someone, manage someone else's Airbnb. 
for them and start oh. making money. You know? Okay. So that's okay. the key is, is learning, learning the craft. Okay. And then as far as using the um, IRA, you said IRA, right? You can yeah, use your you can IRA? Use, there's, you can use people's self-directed IRAs or you can use your own and have um, someone else do the work for you because you can't do the self-dealing. Okay. Okay, yeah. that might be something that I would talk to you about. Yeah, I, um, have, I have that going um, myself. I'm My daughter's, my 10-year-old my daughter retirement account that I created for her has one of these rental arbitrages in it and is growing the business and growing her retirement account. Okay. So I'm actually That's doing it. it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So, um, and also, do you talk about, in, is, in the contract, are there like clauses that cover you so that, you know, you know I know a lot of contracts have clauses to protect yeah. you from... We have some okay. we have some example language uh, that lawyers have written up in our resources pack and bonus three mm -hmm. and also how to uh, you know if you, a landlord is going to give you their lease agreement um, we have mm -hmm. all kinds of instructions on how you should modify that so, so it's, it's all okay. there okay yeah those are those are great questions all questions that I've Thank seen. You. Hundreds of times. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks for joining me. And if people on the replay, uh, reach out to me and see if there is any, um, if I got the three limit on the discount. But um, I, I got to run for dinner. <laughs> okay. Good night. Everybody. Good night. Thanks, for, Good thanks night. for hanging out with me. Uh-huh. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.